the biggest problem in hiring is actually not getting more people in the funnel. It's actually the interview itself. People don't know how to interview. And we've never been taught how to interview using AI and machine learning to, uh, to essentially assist and, uh, and help conduct the interview for each individual. You can stack the deck every time and you can get great people to join your company who are not just skills aligned, but also values aligned. And that's a really powerful combination. So bad hire in, in my world can be like upwards of millions of dollars. You got to kind of keep pushing the envelope and, and driving things. There's a much better way of doing this in which like you can get it right every time. Welcome to another exciting episode of the podcast, The Thought Leader Revolution. I'm your host, Nikki Ballou. And boy, do we have an exciting guest lined up for you today. Today's guest is just a super interesting dude. This is a guy who has a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. So that alone is going to make him an interesting dude to be talking to. But this man is a startup founder. This is a man who hosts his own podcast and radio show, and he is a best-selling author. I'm speaking, of course, another, the one, the only, the legendary Rick Gerard. Welcome to the show, Rick. Hey, thanks for having me, Nikki. It's a pleasure to be here, my friend. Brother, it's an honor to have you on here, man. So, Rick, the nice. folks who come on this show, they're <laughs> looking to grow their business. These are champions for entrepreneurship. These are the men and women who go out there and they put their hearts on the line. They put their, their dreams on the line. And they don't come to this show to listen to me. They come to this show to learn from you. But before they can open themselves up to you, man, they got to get to know you. So tell us your backstory, how you get to be the great Rick Gerard. Yeah, really, right? Um, I love how you build me up, though, baby. Um, so, yeah, you know what? I'm, uh, I'm uh, as you mentioned, I'm a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. It took me eight and a half years to get it, which... Uh, Probably the best and worst day of my life. Um, well, besides, I take that back. Don't let my wife hear this. Anyway, um, <laughs> or my daughter. Um, but uh, yeah, you know what? I, I got into uh, being an entrepreneur uh, probably about 15 years ago. Actually, it's always been in my blood, but uh, got into recruiting uh, in my early 20s and essentially um, kind of became very good at it. Um, developed a passion for it and uh, then decided at one point that like I wasn't good enough at it and I needed to get better. And so um, as, as every entrepreneur has probably felt or gone through in their career, you know, it's uh, you gotta, you gotta kind of keep pushing the envelope and, and driving things. And, uh, and so now me too, I, I too am a, an entrepreneur, um, a tech entrepreneur and I'm building a software company. So, I'm kind of stepping outside my scope and doing some cool things. So tell me about this software company, man. I think that's totally awesome. Yeah, totally. So it's, uh, it's a company called InterTrue. And essentially what we're fixing is the interview process. Mm. Uh, How's that work? This. How's it work? Well, you know, essentially what I found was that the biggest problem in hiring is actually not getting more people on the funnel. It's actually... The interview itself, um, people don't know how to interview and we've never been taught how to interview and uh, there's no North Star to interview. It's just kind of, hey, do you like this person? Uh, do you feel like you want to go grab a beer with them later? And if so, then let's hire them. If not, let's not. And, um, it, and really what I found was that in the thousands of people I've placed throughout my career, um, you know, the ones that didn't work out were the ones that really didn't align with the values of the company. So they failed. And so um, I, I started building an interview process around that premise, around the fact that interviews, um, if done correctly, if you're able to gather the right evidence to support whether or not somebody aligns with the core values of the company, you can stack the deck every time and you can get great people to join your company who are not just uh, skills aligned, but also values aligned. And that's a really powerful combination. So how do you do that using software? Yeah, so you know we're 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 actually software kind of uh, tagged to uh, a SaaS platform using AI and machine learning to uh, to essentially assist and uh, and help conduct the interview for each individual. 
really. So you can use AI in order to like match for values and stuff. So how would that work? So essentially um, you're fed the questions. So you're given the questions as the interviewer. Uh, actually, we feed them to the interviewee too because we give them the opportunity to prepare for the interview. And then essentially as the conversation progresses, the AI is, is, is uh, monitoring the language that's being used and, um, and, and uh, you know, some of the other content um, that it's pulling out. And it's essentially letting you know where to dig deeper, where there might be some red flags, and also um, whether or not, uh, you know, somebody's being truthful or not. Wow, man. So yeah. what you're basically saying is you're taking the guesswork out of the interview process. You're taking the lack of professionalism out of the interview process. You're taking yeah. a guy feeling good about another guy across the table and saying, yeah, I had a beer with this guy. He was a good guy. We had some good gags. Let's do it. And you're yeah. like professionalizing the process. So what is the cost of a bad hire? Why is this important? Why do companies need to do this? Now, the cost of bad hire in, in my world uh, can be like upwards of millions of dollars. I mean, quite frankly, like, you know, I have a search business and we place executives and, you know, you hire an executive who's making three to, you know, half a million dollars a year. Um, usually what ends up um, happening is that, you know, somebody gets in, it takes them six months to a year before they figure out whether or not it's the right person a lot of times. And then you've wasted all that time. And then, I mean, the, the, the opportunity costs lots. And um, and and you know the the change in staff and every other thing uh, can can run in the millions of dollar range you pretty pretty easily. And worst case scenario, your company can fail. Right, you get the wrong person on the bus. That's that's uh, lights out for your company sometimes. You know, it's powerful to be able to demonstrate these things to people, right? Say, you know, the average cost of a bad hire is X tens of thousands or X hundreds of thousands of dollars. And in yeah. certain positions, it's millions of dollars or, or company failure. So, I mean, I think this is powerful. You know, the, we met through an AI uh, podcast matching service called Podmatch. And yeah. what, what I like about Podmatch and what they do, I've, I've become... Uh, friendly with Alex uh, Sam Filippo, who's the fellow who founded Podmatch, nice. and yeah, good dude. Um, but what's really cool about this is I've been wanting to get on a bunch of podcasts myself for a long, long time. Right, never had any problems getting guests, but I've wanted to be a guest on a lot of podcasts, not just three or four a year or whatever the the heck it was I've been able to do. But yeah. the PR firms that um, I spoke to said, Oh, you want to do that? Well, 2,500 a month, we'll get you on guaranteed two shows a month. I'm like, really two shows a month for 2,500 a month, you know? And I thought, yeah, man, that's crazy. That's like, uh, the return on investment didn't make any sense to me. Beginning on a show doesn't mean I'm going to make any money. So I'll be paying you $30,000 a year. And, for exposure. Yeah, screw that. You know, I'm not Coca-Cola. That's not what we do. We don't, we're not in the exposure game. Yeah. In comes Podmatch for 50 bucks a month. I get six to 24 potential matches a day, a day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's like crazy. I've probably been on 30 shows in two and a half months, 30 in two and a half months. Uh, and as a result of being on those shows, I've also generated over six figures in business. I've done business with uh, people whose shows I've been on. And I'm like, bonus. You know, so if there's AI driven connections like the one that Podmatch has created inside of the world of hiring and interviewing, man, you could save organizations millions of dollars. Yeah, most definitely. And that's the idea. And you know what? We're, we're going after small companies too, because small companies uh, have the most at stake. You know, I, I, I'm a startup founder and I believe that, you know, startup founders are my people for the most part. And uh, the truth is there's not a lot of uh, solutions out there because, you know, at the end of the day, the interview is really the only competitive advantage that the company has. And if they blow it, 
then they lose, right? Um, we're also in a we're also in an environment now where really talented people are the ones choosing, not the companies. You know, there's not a surplus of talent out there, even though we're hearing about layoffs and what have you. Uh, the truth is, companies all keep their really strong people; they don't let them go. And so, we've got to be able to take advantage of the fact that when we do get somebody who's interested in the company, then it puts us in a position where, you know, we can land that. You know, that's a beautiful thing. I think what you're doing is needed. I think you're going to be able to get a lot of great. Uh, companies to um come and do business with you as a result yeah. of this I, I i like it i like it a lot thank, I like you. It a lot. thank you so yeah we're actually just launching our beta at the end of the month so we've got the product almost almost done and we're gonna we're gonna uh, just a few key customers we're just gonna work out the kinks and then launch love it so yeah. how'd you come up with the idea man you know it um I'd like to say that I, it was more due to frustration uh, more than anything else. I mean, my, my business has always been an executive search. And um, quite a few years ago, I just, I realized that there, there's just a huge gap in the fact that, again, like I said before, people don't know how to interview and the way interviews are conducted are kind of like the Wild West. And it's, you know, decisions are made on the craziest reasons. Um, and and then there's and then we're surprised when somebody doesn't work out, you know. And it it just seems so obvious to me that hey, look, like there's there's a much better way of doing this, in which like you can get it right every time. And so it just I that's evolved. your that's your marketing message, by the way. Yeah, get much. it right every time. Yep. Exactly. You, you, you know. To, Take, take the mystery out of the madness of hiring. Get it right every time. That's your tagline. There you go. You're Ooh, welcome. I like that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're I'll welcome. take it. I'll take freebies all day long. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> man. That's it. That's that's what you ought to do. You know, people listening to this show are thinking to themselves, okay, this is pretty cool. So when the product is out, I want to find out more but they're probably going to want to get to know you and a little bit more about you, man. So tell me about Brazilian jiu-jitsu, man. What got you into Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Oh, man, you know, so I had a buddy named Tobias who um, I, I was living in Hawaii for quite some time. And um, so essentially I, I built up a, a recruiting firm. I was able to exit and then I packed up all my stuff. I sold everything and I, I moved to Hawaii. And I spent 10 years on Oahu. And uh, one of my buddies and I was there, um, ran the gym a couple of days a week for a ex-UFC fighter named Chris Levin. I don't know if you know who Chris is, but back in the day, he's a guy who always had like crazy pink or red hair or whatever. And he was just, yeah. So, so one Saturday, he talks me into coming in and training with him. And, you know, I took karate when I was younger and I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. I'll, I'll come check it out. And then he uh, just picked apart my karate and just punched me in the face for 45 minutes. But it got me kind of, uh, it kind of got me in this mindset of, oh, this is something I'm really terrible at. Maybe I should get good at. So I started an MMA in my transition back to California uh, from Hawaii. I, um, I decided, hey, I'll just start kind of doing this jujitsu thing. And at first it was kind of like, it was interesting to me, but then it's just one of those things once you start doing it, that just grows on you. And it's kind of like, uh, for me, it's kind of like this chess match that you're playing with another person where, you know, they can arm bar you or submit you or put you to sleep. Right. And so it just became a very, I, I don't know, it just became my thing for a while. And, and I've been doing it eight and a half years now and I can't get enough. Of it. Three mornings a week, I'm in the gym. Rolling. Man, you look like a beast. I look at you, man. You're like a physical beast. You're a specimen, you know? I'm not. I'm tiny. I got this COVID belly I got to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, man. But look at those, those shoulders, the chest, man. You look like a beast. I love it. And yo, speaking of the UFC, man, can you believe the fight this weekend, man? 
Edwards. You know what? I haven't watched it yet. I didn't oh, watch it. But dude. Got, I know. Kamaru got knocked out, right? Dude. So listen, Kamaru is a bona fide champion, right? Like he's one of the greatest oh, fighters. Yeah. You know, in the history of MMA, there's no question about it. But he's also an arrogant ass. Let's be honest. He always puts down everybody he's about to fight. He's got no class, no grace. He's like a new school fighter. He's not an old, he's no Rocky Marciano. He's no Stipe Miocic, who's a nice, nice man. You know, Miocic will come beat you in the ring, but he's not going to badmouth you and bad talk you all the way. Yeah. Kam Kamaru just always just nasty to everybody. And I just didn't like him. He turned me off for that. I go, that's not how I was raised, man. I was raised to be respectful, even to your opponents and fighting. I did yeah. karate. You go us before you go fighting with people. Even yeah. if you're about to take their head off, you show respect to your opponent. He never did. So I just, I've been praying for somebody to beat the crap out of this son of a bitch. And <laughs> it was for me, I love seeing Leon the legend just knock his ass out. It was glorious. Like, boom, oh, yeah, lights out, baby. Lights out. I haven't seen it yet. Oh. I mean, I saw, I heard about it, but I haven't seen it yet. So don't. You, you didn't see the kick? No, no, oh, not yet. Dude, dude, you got to watch that, man. You know, pull out the video clip of the of the kick. It's a minute long, man. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> oh, I will. Yeah. I was a little, I'm a, I'm a big Jose Aldo fan. Like, like the, I've loved him ever since he was yeah. camp, and I, I'm sad to see that he lost, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's uh, he, he's a badass, but you know, there there comes he's getting up there though. There's a there comes a time in a in a man's career when uh, he's going to have to understand that it's not going to be the same uh, as it was. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Um, oh, tell me. So, yeah, tell yeah. Me. I mean, Luke Rockhold. You know, he got his butt kicked this week. I I didn't watch the whole fight, so I just watched the clips of it. Right. Okay. Um, I, 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 I was, yeah, di didn't feel like staying up and all that good stuff, but Luke Rockhold, Paul Costa beat him up, beat him up good. And, but he fought, man, he gave it everything he had, you know, he was, he was a valiant fighter. He didn't, he didn't back down for a second. And then Joe Rogan interviewed him in the ring and, and, and he basically said, Hey, Luke, you know, man, you, you gave it your all, but you came up short. He goes, yeah. You know, he says, why do you think that is? He said, well, you know, I gave it everything I had. I trained. I was there, but I'm getting old. <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> and that's just like, I listen to that. And I'm like, Abraham Lincoln talked about the veterans who won the Civil War. You, you, you know, he said that the silent artillery of time gets us all. And that's the truth. Oh, yeah. Very true. That's the truth. Very true. That's the truth. Yeah, you Anyways. know, it's funny. My, uh, so last week was San Diego. There's a this guy who... Um, his kids train at my gym, so I get to see him, Chito Vera. Yeah. Um, so, man, he, you know, I was super excited for him because I've gotten to know him a little bit, and that guy is, is just a beast. He just trains every day, no matter what, doesn't even, because I don't do camps, you know, every day is a camp for me. And it, it, it's nice to see him kind of rise up the ranks. That's good. Yeah. yeah. That was like that British fighter, Michael Bisping. He was like that too, eh? ready to fight oh, at yeah. a moment's notice. You know, what you're doing with your business is wonderful. And you've come up with a great concept. And um, Thank you. we're fans. We're cheering for you. And if there's something we can do to help, um, We'd like to do it. So, you know, let me know what's the biggest itch you're looking to scratch at this moment. And we'll make sure that happens. Um, what would you like to let the audience know, you know, about how to get in touch yeah. with you? What do you need? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, like you, I, I've been kind of doing the podcast circuit too. Pod match was great. Um, I've um, I, I just been wanting to get the word out there that there's a better way to, to go about hiring and um, I think companies need to start putting some mindshare into it uh, because when you get good at it, your business becomes much easier, right? You don't end up like me with pulling out all your hair and, um, you know, running around bald. <laughs> You're life. funny, buddy. Man, <laughs> the man with the shaved head talks about pulling out all his hair. I love it. Well, I, I had long hair at one point, but not so me much too. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. That was a while back. Yeah, but I tell you what, I'm going to introduce you to a friend of mine who runs a, a wealth uh, management and research company here in, in Canada. 
Um, he does a, a show. His name's Anthony Shilapati. I'm going to connect you with him. I think he'd be interested in what you've created for himself. And I'll, um, I'll bring you out to come speak at some of the things that we do if you're up for it. Because you oh, yeah, your, totally. your, your message is good. And I think there'll be lots of people who will be interested in what you have to offer. I'll also introduce you to um, uh, some folks when you're when you're ready and you got something you're ready to launch with people I introduce you to some folks who could potentially be customers for you and if you're if if you're not part of one uh right now you should join some sort of peer group um i run a peer group myself for 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 men who are uh, running businesses and be happy to chat with you at, uh at the time when you're ready to to have those kinds of meetings and discussions because you want to be around other smart business owners it's important oh yeah totally it's, yeah, I'm uh, part of EO. So. Yeah, EO's good. Okay, so you're part of something yeah. good. Oh, EO's heck great. yeah. Like, man, I couldn't, I couldn't survive with that. I don't know how entrepreneurs do without, you know, having some sort of yeah. support. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm with you there. I'm yeah. with you there. It's 100% important in my uh, my humble opinion to get that done. All right, so listen. Um, so what's the website that people need to go to in order to find out more about you, your company, and all that good stuff? Yeah, we're um, so we're right now. Like, if uh, if it sounds like something that's interesting to you, um, it's intertrue, i n t e r t r u dot a i. So uh, you can check out that website. You can find me at stridesearch dot com, and that's s t r i d e s e a r c h dot com. Cool. Um, or you can uh, check out my podcast. Actually, it's called Higher Power Radio. It's not a religious show. It's H I R E Power Radio, <laughs> and the premise is, you know. We bring on entrepreneurs, and, and the thing is, we 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 talk about how to solve difficult hiring challenges. So you know, that's a great can, idea. Peer learning, I'm a big proponent of it too, and I feel like you know we share stories from other entrepreneurs as to how they built their businesses and what mistakes they made in hiring and how they got past it, and and uh, then we provide what those solutions were so people can plug it into their business. Well, I got a couple CEOs I can send you away from that podcast point of view. Uh, if you're looking to bring on a, a thought leader and branding expert like me, I'd be happy to come on your show and talk about some of those issues around creating some powerful thought leadership. But there's a couple of guys I got for you that I think will be good. And they might even potentially be clients for you going forward. They run decent sized companies. So happy to yeah, do I'm that. Happy. For you, I'm, ha- I'm always happy to meet people, man. That's kind of my thing. So Me too, brother. Me too. It's yeah. how you grow a business, man. Business is a people game. It's not a numbers game. It's a people game. Yeah, what is it? Your net worth is a direct correlation to your network. Hundred percent, hundred percent. There's a. I, I wrote a book uh, on on your on on the the power of connecting. It's about your network. Hold on a sec. There you go. What's it called? The power of connecting. Nice. Yeah. So I'm a big believer and big proponent of that. And then I got I've got mine too. Healing Healing career career. wounds. I love it. All right. Awesome. Awesome, pal. All right. Beautiful. So, Rick, we like to end off our uh, podcast episode by asking you as our guest expert, what are your top three expert action steps? These are your three top pieces of advice for our listeners to take their business to the next level. What do you say? Yeah, absolutely. So start with your core values. If you don't have core values written down and you don't like you're not living them, then you need to get together with your team and sit in a room and take like, you know, half a day and get those written down and start living them with your organization. Second, build your interview process around your core values. If people align with your core values, they're going to thrive. And if they don't, you're going to have a lot of disappointments. And then, uh, Thirdly, you know what? Train your people how to interview. Um, I spoke to a room once of like there was like uh, close to 400 executives, corporate executives, right? These people were from major companies. And I asked, I opened up with the question of, you know, everybody in this room, raise your hand if you've been taught official, like a, how to, um, if you've formally been taught how to interview other than what not to say. And I only had three people raise their hands. Three out of a full room. That's yeah. nuts, brother. Yeah. So that means like, look at if, if you can, if you can get really good at that and you get your people really good at it, 
then it puts you in a position where you can pick the strongest people and stack the deck so your company thrives. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And that's good stuff. Um, you know what, Rick? Great to have you on the show. Uh, real honor to have you join us today. Thank you so much for being here. Listener, to find out more about Rick Gerard, come check out uh, all the information we have about him in the show notes. You know, wherever you happen to listen to this podcast, his top three uh, expert action steps are really, really great. And his company is filling a need. And I think it's a fantastic company. You know, if it's something that makes sense for you and your company, check him out. Go, um, go do business with him. You know, he could save you hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Absolutely. Rick, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. It's an honor to have you here, brother. Nikki, thanks so much for having me, B. Uh, brother. <laughs> I just caught you said Nikki B earlier. So I was like, Nikki, I am yeah. Nikki B, bro. <laughs> All right. That <laughs> wraps up another exciting episode of the podcast, The Thought Leader Revolution. To find out more about today's incredible guest, the one and only Rick Gerard, go to the show notes at thethoughtleaderrevolution.com or wherever you happen to listen to this show on your podcast app. And if you got some value out of the show, here's the fee, as Andy Frisella likes to say. Share it with somebody else. That's how we grow, okay? That's how we do what we do. So make sure that you do that. Share it with someone who needs to hear the message. Until next time, goodbye. This episode has been brought to you by eCircleAcademy.com, the proven system to add six to seven figures a year to your thought leader practice.